Hey there! Happy Monday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, all right, you guys, we are back on the ABC Quilt Along. We are starting the K Koala uh, tonight. So a lot of you might be familiar with this design because we did a whole uh, community quilt uh, where we all stitched the letter K and my mom and I turned it into a quilt. Uh, and I th what was that? Was that two years ago already, you guys? Oh my gosh. We should do another one of those. That was really fun. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to be stitching it again and uh, I'm excited to do it. Uh, we'll pick some fun floss. Uh, maybe we'll do different colors. We've been kind of playing around, having fun with uh, what we're using on these. So I'm excited to get going. All right, and great to see everyone again. All right, hello, hello everyone. So it has been a while. Uh, I took last week off and the Friday off. So we are starting fresh here after, after a while. So it's nice seeing y'all pop in again. Um, all right. Hello. Oh, thanks. Uh, Kathy says, welcome back. Uh, Linda says, Yahoo. Alyssa is back. <laughs> uh, you guys are sweet. So, all right. We have our uh, uh, K embroidery here. So first thing I'm going to do is let's get this uh, pressed onto our fabric. Ooh, I should have show and tell first, you guys. Like, I, I only have one thing for show and tell, but when I was uh, at my parents' house, I tatted uh, this bookmark. So I'm going to get, like, here, I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit. Hold on. There we go. So this is a tatted bookmark. My mom had a pattern that she had got somewhere, so I, I used that pattern. But I hadn't tatted in a while, and uh, I got to use the... the um, Lisbeth thread, which is like the recommended thread for tatting. And it's the first time I used the Lisbeth. Uh, this was a pretty variegated gray to white. And it was so much fun. I actually made two of them, but I gave one of them to uh, John's mom when we saw, we saw uh, them this weekend too. So I made another one that was actually gray and like pink and purple. And it was just like really, really cute. So I had a share. Uh, that's my, uh, that was my, <laughs> when I was off. Um, I did that and I tried to do it in the, the way that, um, uh, that you're supposed to hold a tatting shuttle or a tatting thread, which is not supposed to, but you know, what, what traditional style of, um, holding, uh, your thread is with your front, uh, your thumb and forefinger. And I was having a hard time doing that. I was using my, uh, for my thumb and third finger, which I still find easier, but um, I'm practicing with the uh, the other method of holding where the string goes around and you're holding it right here. So I did both both um, bookmarks that I did uh, in that style of, of hand uh, for practice. So I'm excited for that. I wanna try that with the snowflakes now. All right. How did she like her chicken picture? Kelly, I actually forgot to bring it. It's still sitting here. <laughs> So I still got the chicken. Uh, I still got I still got that here. So uh, her birthday's coming up. So I think I'll I'll just uh, I'll give it to her for her birthday instead. I've been meaning to do a video on how to do the, um, you know, we did on live. We did how to do the crocheted border, and I wanted to do a video of doing it again, uh, and I just haven't done that yet. So. Uh, and I also forgot. So, uh, so it's going to be a birthday present <laughs> instead of a just because present. So I forgot, but for funsies, I, um, uh, for a no reason at all gift, uh, gave her that bookmark instead. All right. I got the iron me pattern here, uh, back stitch and satin stitch in this one. I'm going to keep, keep my instructions here nearby. Uh, just for colors and, you know, what's filled in is satin stitch. Um, but we can play around with that, too. Uh, but here is the Iron Me pattern. Uh, I'm going to cut off the edge here. I don't want that on my, the text on my fabric. And, okay, so let's transfer our design and we'll get going. Oh, Wanda says happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so last week... 
I basically took off for my birthday and went and visited family and stuff too. And it was just a nice, uh, nice little break. But I'm happy to be back with you guys for sure. That was a long time off of lives for me. <laughs> All right. So I got my fabric here. Um, I'm actually going to put a paper towel underneath it just so I don't uh, accidentally transfer the design to my, my mat as well. Uh, I don't think it would show up on my mat, but if I press something else after it being on my mat, it might actually transfer again to that something else. So you do want, you do want some protection for your ironing surface. So I put that down there. Um, so I'm going to preheat my fabric first by pressing it. And then I'm going to just kind of eyeball this in the center. Uh, my fabric's bigger than I need it to be. We'll, we'll chop it down. So if I get, you know, relatively close to the center, we'll be good. Uh, so I'm going to be putting it face down. It's reversed here because we're actually pressing the back. Uh, it'll be right side once we do that. So, all right, let's get the iron out. So I am just preheating the fabric. Just giving it a little press. This is a good opportunity to just press your fabric anyway, uh, if it needs it. Mine was pretty flat here already. But all right, preheated. Uh, all right, let's set this down. I'm gonna have to stand up to do this. Um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this in the center. I think that's decent. All right, and then I'm gonna just lay the iron on the back for a few seconds, like five seconds or so. I know I did a little less, but I'm just gonna peek. Ooh, we were pretty good. You don't wanna wiggle um, the iron too much because you don't want your pattern to wiggle. Okay, this is totally coming off already. So there we go. Oh, cool. I didn't hold it on that ear as long as the rest of it, but I can totally see that line still. So we're, we're totally good. Um, and this can be used like up to five times or so. So if I wanted to put this like on a jean jacket or something, I still could. Uh, so, I'll, uh, so I'll save this uh, for later, for sure. Uh, but we're good to go now with with this guy, with the iron on. Oh, did I hurt my hand? Oh, did I, like from the tatting? <laughs> Is that what you mean, Nora? Because I'm like, oh, do I have like some giant cut on my hand? Which, you know, there could be. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't really. Um, but from the from the tatting, like holding holding um, my hand differently, um, not like what I thought I was going to. I thought for sure I would get like a hand cramp from holding my my um, hand like this for like hours. Uh, but it wasn't so bad. Uh, it was more awkward than anything. Oh, it looks bruised. Oh, my hand. Oh, weird. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I think it's just like super duper dry. Maybe the camera's color correcting funny. Uh, oh, Laura says, missed you waiting page patiently. Or Laurie, sorry. Ah, that's sweet, thank you. All right, let's uh, get going. So I got that centered in here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this up. Oh, Amy, Amy says, aren't you stamping two at a time from the, for the book? So I was, um, so I was actually transferring two of these at the same time, but, um, I actually found, I've, I've been cleaning my, my basement a little bit. Um, I've been cleaning up like all my craft stuff and I actually found a whole pile of, finished em embroideries of the letters. So I think I have almost every letter of the alphabet stitched already, um, except for like maybe two. I got to look up what, what two they are again. So I think I might actually have enough for the book already. I wonder if I brought all that up here. I don't think I did, but I think I might actually have enough for the book. So I haven't been pressing um, the two anymore uh but i still have all the papers so i might um i might um stitch again but i'll have to bring all those up because i think um i think i may have enough okay um so there we go i think i kind of have his head stretched a little bit weird in there though i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of reset this a little bit so i'm i'm just gonna loosen it up and and put it in here again 
I just think I pulled on that area of the head a little bit and it was looking extra extra pointy so we'll we'll get that done there yeah, that's a little bit better okay <laughs> Amy says oh cool the next project is almost done I know <laughs> it did feel like that I'm like ooh, I'm just gonna use use a bunch of these I'm not actually sure I don't think I um actually I'm, I'm sure of some um I I know that I did not stitch all of them but I stitched some we had a bunch of samples made at some point but didn't use them all like uh, a bunch of people stitched stitched on some for us and this was like a decade ago uh and uh, so uh, um I'm gonna use them for this instead I think Okay, I got my little strawberry tray with um, the colors we've been using. So this is from my set of 23 um, penguin and fish colors, uh, floss colors. And uh, I, I have them all on the little spools now. Uh, but here's the, the mass that isn't like the, the full like six strands yet. So I've been trying to kind of pull from here first. So I kind of want to continue that a little bit. So, um, I don't know, we could use the same colors. I do kind of like the, um, we have like the denim wash here and the, the lilac purple, but why don't we pick? We'll pick with, with these colors and then we'll see if we have them in here. Actually, maybe we'll pick with these colors. I do have like this, ah, you know what? Let's pick with our fresh colors and then I'll just see if I have some other ones. I kind of think it'd be fun to use this blue. What do we have a lot of yet? Oh, we do actually have a lot of this purple. We could do, we could do two different purples. We could do a dark purple and a light purple. That'd be kind of cute. So we could do like the dark purple for uh, the mom koala and the light purple for, for the baby. I think that might be kind of sweet. Or we could play around with this a little bit. What if, what if we did where we combine two colors at once? So like we have a strand of blue and a strand of purple that we stitch with at the same time. So the colors kind of blend. That's actually pretty common. I'm learning a whole lot more about cross stitch, but that's actually pretty common in cross stitch um, to blend colors. Um, usually they're a bit closer in color than, than this, but, um, but yeah. Uh, we could try that. I think let's do that. Add a little bit of something to this. So what if we do these, we'll do like dark blues situation and like a light blue and purple situation. So maybe this is the baby and then this is the, the mom. That'd be kind of interesting. I don't do that very often. Um, I've hardly ever done that. So that, that'd be kind of fun. And we could do the same with like the nose. We could do like the two different grays for the noses. Um, we're not actually like thread painting, so I'm not look at, uh, like, I'm not going to have like part of the nose white and like the shadows dark gray or something, or the, like the light gray and then like dark gray for the shadows. I'm, I'm talking about like actually combining the threads together. So it'll be more like a twisty, um, um, like a, a baker's twine almost sort of look. Um, I kind of think, I kind of think that'd be fun. Let's, let's start there. So, all right. We're going to start with that idea. So this will be the baby and this will be the, the mom. Oh, thanks user A22. Uh, all right. But I am going to see if I can grab from my, my stash here first. Okay. So I'm going to start with the mom one, I think. All right. So here, oh, but if I combine it, then I'm, then I'm doing like, I still want to do I still want to do like three strands. So maybe on the mom, I'll do two strands of the blue and one of the purple. And then maybe on the baby, I'll do two strands of the purple and one of the blue. Let's just decide. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to, I have two strands here already of the blue. So I'm going to find a purple, a dark purple in here. And hopefully it's a similar length. Oh, this is a mess. That's what happens when I get the mass of floss together. Oh, I have a little knot here that I just want to take care of. Got my little needle minder here. I think I can grab this before it gets out of hand. There we go. Okay. So. Oh, 
so it'll be like blue with this tiny tinge of purple. And my purple is not nearly as long as the blue, but I do have more purple in here, so I'm wondering if I happen to have a longer piece. Oh yeah, this one's a bit longer, so we'll save this shorter purple piece for later. And if I have to get more th floss, which I'm sure I will, I will um cut it like to the right length, or to this, a similar length right away. All right. Ooh, you guys, I am back to having my live special deal as well. So order um, $20 from the shop, from penguinandfish.com while I'm live here. There we go. Now I'm not wasting as much. And I will throw in a free mystery gift. Um, you don't need a code or anything. I will just throw it in your order. Okay, we are ready. Grab my needle minder. He can just sit on the table here. There we go. Okay. And I think I'm going to start this in that funny way where I just left a, a piece dangling out. Um, this will make sense in, in a bit, but I'm going to start from the front and I'm going to kind of go around. Actually, what would be a good path? I think, um, you know what? I think I'm going to start here. Yeah, we'll go to about here and I'll start these ears. I'll probably have to jump back up around. Or maybe we start here, get the ears. Jump back. Oh God, I don't know. Let's do that. We'll just start with an ear over here. So I'm, I'm actually going to start from the front. This is going to be backstitch, but I'm going to start from the front. And I'm just going to let uh, a few inches just dangle out here. Oh, Ro Robin's asking, is that additional to the 20% off? Because we are having a holiday sale as well. Yeah, so if you just hit, um, uh, without shipping, if you just hit the $20 in the cart. So I think probably after, after the discount is taken off. Um, then uh, I will just put, put a mystery gift in your, in your order. So you'd, you'd get the 20% off, um, plus the mystery gift. All right. And I am going to, uh, I think just, just, uh, just so I can make sure, well, I mean, I'll, I'll be able to tell too. Uh, but yeah, so after you put the discount in, if it's like at that $20 mark, um, I think that that'll work. And if you're, if, you, if it's before to, I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'll throw in that mystery gift even with the, with the discount. All right, so I'm going to leave this little bit out. And I'm going to actually use this to make my, make a, like a single stitch at the end and uh, use it to weave in the end. So this is me being lazy with um, holding a piece of floss for later. But right now... I'm just going to do the back stitch and then these little lines will be, um, these little lines, I'll just do a single stitches. Oh, and says the embroidery pattern of the month is super cute. I have to wait till payday to get it. Oh, nice. That's right. I have that sitting here. So the embroidery of the month this month is our Luna Moth. I am so excited about him. Uh, we're doing a new stitch that we haven't done here before and it's the fishbone stitch. Uh, so we're doing that for the little antenna and then we got some nice chain stitch and stuff, but he's so cute, I think. And the freebie, uh, so if you guys haven't received your, uh, if you get the embroidery of the month during the month, you get a special freebie with it. And the freebie for this month is, uh, our little greeting card of the Luna Moth. It's blank on the inside. Uh, you are my moon and stars. Little Luna Moth is our, um, our freebie for the month. So I, I really like how that turned out. I'm having a fun time just like drawing more. <laughs> so uh, lots of fun little dudes coming up. But yeah, so that is our embroidery of the month and the little freebie of the month. Oh, Kelly says I get birthday money next week. Then I'm going to get a few things from the shop, LOL. Oh, fun. Happy birthday. 
That's fun. Oh my gosh, Sue said I, I did uh, did that one uh, um, of my block submitted to the quilt uh, or to the quilt action for the rescues. Oh, it's so fun to do. Oh yeah, you you had a had a block for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I I love making that quilt that um, that we did with all the koalas. That was so fun. I would love to do another another one like that. I'll have to think about that. Think about doing another group quilt like that. That was really fun. I do have that on on our on the YouTube yet. The um, making of that. Maybe I should. I should cut that down and put it on TikTok too. That was just such a fun project. I love that improv piecing where you just um, put a piece next to the piece and even it out with another piece and sew it together. I just love that so much. And that's, that's kind of how we piece all the koalas together. We just cut them into kind of random squares and with all the excess fabric, we... Uh, just even them all out and sewed them all together. It's just such a cute look, I think. Okay, this is looking super cute with these variegated colors here. I'm going to try and get close on both cameras. Oop. So you can kind of see there's just, there's like a little, a little tinge of, of purple in there. Because we blended that purple and, and blue. Ooh, I gotta see Chad Kitty, too. That's always fun when I visit my parents. He's so skinny now, he's got his summer coat on, which means he has, like, all his fur is gone, basically. It's not, like, gone, gone, but it's just, like, that, that outer layer of fur. <laughs> he looks like a totally different cat. It's funny. Okay, so now I think, so I'm just trying to like plan my path here a little bit. It's a little bit goofy. Um, oh, actually, maybe I'll go down. Uh, I was going to go up and then get this part, but maybe I will go down this way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any rhyme or reason. And then I know I'm going to run out of thread, and maybe when that happens, I start up here and then get these, these bits. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to continue, like, I'm going to continue this head. I'm going to continue the back stitch. Actually, gosh, I'm really going to mess this up now. Like, I'm wondering if I should actually stop. God, I'm wondering if, I'm, if I should actually go down the back like get off of the head and go down the back because <laughs> if I start again I'll want to do this and then the whole ear and then come around oh but then I'll be far away I don't know I think I'm just messing up where I want to go so we're just going to keep stitching and I'm not going to think about it as much how about that <laughs> I'm just going to keep going around in a circle does he stay indoors now oh no Sue he is he is an exclusively an outdoor um, cat or a working cat as you'd say or a farm cat um, but without the farm he, he, he does come inside though um, <laughs> but he comes he like he just like stares at the back door to be let in and then he comes in and then like runs to the front door uh, to get let out and then because he, he, you know, then he gets treats. <laughs> We've been giving him treats, so. So he comes to the back door, gets let in, runs to the front door, then goes out and, like, paws at the front door to go out and then gets treats. So that's, that's his new game. Sometimes he'll come in for a little bit, but he definitely tolerates that for, you know, just so long before he's, he's out of there. He does find the shade, though. He, he does, um, he does like the shade. He's definitely lost all that, um, 
winter floof, though. Like, he's got a triangle head again now instead of, like, a big round head. It's funny. I think these colors are kind of fun. I like that we're kind of playing around with with these designs. Like how we do the colors and, and that sort of thing. All right now here's where I'm like, okay, should I go across here? Ooh, put that in a really weird spot. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go do the bottom part of this ear. We're like totally all over the place and like me mapping out where to go next, but we're just gonna deal. Oh, you put an air tag on your cat after he went missing for five days. Oh, I'm glad he came back. Oh man, an air tag. That'd be interesting just to see where he goes. I don't think he goes very far. He doesn't go very far, uh, Chad, to the point that, like, if we walk, like, if we go on a walk and we go kind of a little bit further away than he likes, he'll just sit and, and wait for us. Like, if we go to the, if we turn the corner, he'll just sit at the corner and he'll either wait or he'll, he'll leave. Um, but yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't veer away. He's still pretty jittery. Like, he's he's really, like, sound jittery. So, um, you know, loud noises, cars, people, all that. He'll kind of, he'll kind of um, scooch off. Not always people. Depends. If it's all of a sudden people or other animals, then for sure he's out of there. But yeah, so he doesn't go too far. He knows where his people are. He goes and watches the sunset with with my parents every night. It's just so cute. Like um, they they live on a lake and there's like a little pier and it's just there's a little bench to watch the sunset. Um, they don't do that every night, but like every night he kind of shows up at that time and he starts walking in that direction like he's ready to go sit sit on the bench on the pier and watch the sunset and he sits right in the middle of mom and dad. <laughs> it's so cute. Ah, just a good kitty. Uh, Chad kitty. I should take a picture sometime. I'm sure I do have a picture. He just jumps up on the bench right in the middle of them and just sits and watches the sunset with them. Okay, I'm almost out of thread and I'm not sure what direction to go in because I think I'm going to just end up uh, in a place I don't want to be map-wise, but whatever, we'll figure it out. So we'll be stitching this guy for this week, and then next week we will be um, working on the lion. And uh, uh, so we're going in alphabetical order for this. Uh, so the lion's next, and we talked about doing turkey work for the um, whole entire mane, which could take a long time. But we do, we have a few days to do it, so why not try? So turkey work is like what we did on the tail of um, the giraffe here, where we just make it super floofy. Oh, and actually we talked, now that I'm remembering, we talked about using up the rest of our, like, the little, like, floof ball that we have. So that would be a great opportunity to use up um, all of our scraps. That'd be kind of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So that'll be, that'll be next um, Oh shoot, lost my thread. That'll be next, next week. Thought it felt funny, came right out. There we go. And you know, again, right, it came out right at the time that, um, at the point where I always accidentally pull the thread out. All right, I'm gambling that I can get all of these stitches in this part of the ear done. 
Ooh, someone just ordered. Thank you so much for the order. Uh, I appreciate that a ton. You'll definitely get a mystery gift. So again, order $20 or more in the shop and get a free mystery gift while we're live here. Uh, I'll be live for another half hour or so. And uh, yeah, we're also running a sale on our holiday kits because dang, it's getting late in the year again. I mean, it's crazy, a little crazy to think of holiday right now, but really, if you're gonna get them embroideries done and, <laughs> and turning them into gifts, like now is kind of the time uh, to start thinking about that holiday stitching. Uh, so trying to get it on the mind a little bit again. All right, I think I can get like one more. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm bailing, let's just trim. This is a good good spot to finish this thread and I have barely enough to do another stitch. So um, I'm weaving in the ends three times. Oops, this guy's hanging out there. Um, let's trim that. And uh, um, now I'm gonna come back to this little dangly piece that we left here at the beginning. Thread that. Uh, I might need to trim the ends. Nope, I think I got it. Uh, and I'm gonna finish that first stitch, like I skipped a stitch at the beginning, just to do this, to bring it to the back. And now I'm gonna weave in that end as well. So that's my lazy way of starting, where I can still, um, oop, ah, gonna lose it again. There we go, where I can still weave in the ends. Um, at the beginning as well as the end. So at the beginning I didn't have any stitches to weave in, so I had to like wait a little and that's why I had that thread kind of dangling out. Okay, snip that. And... All right, I need more purple and blue. So or here's the purple that I had earlier. It's a nice long piece, so I don't think I have two more blue pieces. I just have like these little scraps, so I think, yeah, I just have little scraps. So I think we're gonna get a fresh blue and I'm going to um, get the same length that I got here, which is a nice long piece and then I'll, I'll use it, you know, I'll keep using it because it'll, it'll be in my little, little bin of scruff extras. There we go. And I'm going to just, uh, let's put that back on there. I'll leave it out as a reminder. <laughs> um, and then, oop, get that purple out of the way. And I just need two strands out of here. So I'm gonna pull them the way I normally do. Bop the end, just so I can see each individual strand. Pull one. There we go. Okay, we got our three strands, our, our little combo situation again. You guys, John's birthday, John Boy's birthday is coming up soon, so if you have any suggestions for gifts, let me know. His birthday is um, August 1st, so in our family, uh, we're the only um, summer, between the both of our families, we're the summer birthdays. All right, there's spring and fall birthdays. All right, um, where do we start now? I think, I think maybe I'll just start here and go around this way. We'll get this little bit, then, I don't know, kind of jump back, get these little guys, and then jump down here. I think we'll have enough thread to kind of come around that way. So I think that's the plan. Let's start there. So I'm gonna weave in. Now I have actual stitches I can weave into. I don't have to let that, that first little bit dangle off. I could, that's a decent way to start um, as well even if I do have stitches to weave into, but I'm gonna just do it now. Uh, my, my blue looked a little bit longer than the purple, so I'm actually gonna trim those two little bits. 
that stayed there. So I always weave in three times. So let's. Oh, I matched matched the scissors again. I'm I'm using blue. It's kind of the same same blue from from the pattern. <laughs> so we've been we've been playing that game a little bit. All right, let's flip, and we'll continue our little back stitches. Oh, geez, this is a long piece of thread. Wow. This is definitely longer than I usually use, so I'm, I'm thinking I maybe got originally cut it this long to double it up to do two strands. But I don't know, we've been pretty consistently using three strands, so maybe I just got greedy and cut it pretty big. Still like kind of that combo of colors. Maybe we'll do that for every part of this. This will just be the combo color um, version of the of the koala. You know, I did do a combo. I, I'm remembering this now. When we did work on that quilt, I remember I did do a little zipper pouch, and I think we did a a drawing for it. I know I gave it away, but I, I don't remember how we structured that. Um, I think it was just like a little, like we chose a name or something. Um, but anyway, but that one I think I did with two color threads like this, like a mixture of, of threads, if I remember right. That was a fun project too. Man, we gotta make more zipper pouches. I use those all the time for everything. Ooh. A little knot going there. There we go. Popped it out. So for the satin stitch, if I do this kind of combo thread thing, I'm probably not going to do the two-stranded satin stitch where where we do the railroad technique so that all our strands lay like perfectly flat. I probably won't do that style of um, satin stitch. I'll probably just do three strands like this and just like plop them on. So it won't be a perfect like shiny satin stitch. The, the stitches will be like twisted and, and all that, but I think we're gonna have a better effect of seeing random colors in the in the floss like because we're using different color colors of floss at the same time so I think I think the effect might be a little bit better because otherwise we're gonna have to like decide what strand goes on what side each time and I think that'll just be a big hassle I think that makes sense Ooh, Jenna says, I just made a zipper pouch from the autumn sparkle pattern and loved how it turned out Ugh, man once you start making zipper pouches I think it's you just start making a zillion of them because they're just so nice for everything. Ooh, Amy, that sounds fun. Amy says, I got my husband and I tickets to Sip and Script. <laughs> That's cute. They do calligraphy classes at, at wineries and microbreweries. Oh, my God. We don't drink, but uh, like the ambience. Does John like lettering? He might. You know, that's. I wonder if we have something like that. I mean, I know there's like the painting sip things, but we've never done one of those together. Like I've done them for like a bridal shower or something, but it would be kind of fun to do that with just us. Ugh, with that, you know, I don't know. We've been, we've been not going out because of COVID and all that sort of stuff yet. But like, I like the idea of calligraphy though. That would be really kind of fun. I'm gonna have to Google that for our area. I haven't heard of that before, um, like a calligraphy class with the like wine and whatever, sip and script, that's cute. I'll look, I'll look for Minneapolis if there's something like that. I think he'd be down for that. I think he'd be, I mean, you know, he's definitely, he's a designer. He, he's interested in typography and lettering and has to choose fonts and stuff all the time. It'd be interesting to like, do some calligraphy stuff. I think that'd be really fun, actually. Sip and script. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard that before. I've heard of like the. They call they all call themselves different, but the um. 
like the paint and I don't I don't know what they're calling it, but anyway, I've done that a couple times and it's fun. I mean, it's 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 silly. You're you're just making like this pre-done design and you don't even know what's happening. They just like, "Okay, paint it all red. Okay, now put some yellow circles or whatever." Like it, it's it's goofy like that, but it's still so fun and relaxing. But yeah, something like that like a like an in-person thing might be kind of fun. What I should look for too is we did that um I uh this is like a fancy gift, but like we had gotten my dad for his birthday or Christmas or something once um, a class at the glass blowing. There's a lot of glass blowing, like real legit crazy giant kiln warehouse area glass blowing places in our area. And uh, we'd got my dad a class, like a, an, an intensive weekend course. And it, then it looked so fun that, that, um, that John um, got on that too. So John and dad took that course and mom and I um, there was another event in the area and we, we went to that and then we came back and just watched and it was just so fascinating one and cool. So we had talked about maybe doing that again, um, John and me together. Um, so I should look into that again, but I don't know, that's kind of a, that'd be fun to get like more family involved in that. Like next time a bunch of people are around doing that. Oh, Jenna says I, I did a macrame class at a brewery once. Really? Dang, I gotta like look at this stuff more. That sounds so fun. Probably not up John's alley, but it was a fun time. I think he would be game for all that. He's done uh, some of these embroideries before. He's done, uh, he's stitched the giraffe and uh, um, put in a tree with leaves and stuff. Uh, um, he's, he's done, he's super artsy. I think he would like all that stuff. He might do a little like, eh, okay, whatever. Okay, fine, we'll go do that. But um, I think while there, while doing it, I think he'd really, really like it a lot. classes that could be interesting that is something I would have never thought of oh Sheila um absolutely um does a pdf pattern count towards the 20 dollars it does so if you if you get all digital patterns for the mystery gift um meaning there's there's nothing shipping um the mystery gift I may have it be digital as well but I might I might um I might still send one out, but yes, that would count. Uh, uh, the um, PDF patterns would count towards the twenty dollar to get a mystery gift for sure. Absolutely. Actually, I'd probably still. Um, I'm I'm thinking it, I'd probably still just mail you one unless you like if the note if you want your mystery gift to be digital let me know um if you, if you only get digital products if if i if there's something shippable I'll, I'll put a ship one in and i might you know i can still do a shippable mystery gift anyway if you if you do um the the digital only um i may need to uh you may get a note from me like asking what what address you want it shipped to because I think on the digital products it doesn't ask the address if I remember right. Oh man, I did that thing you guys where I accidentally stab. Oh no, I didn't. Good. Whew. Um I I thought I did the thing where I accidentally stab through a piece of thread coming up from the back and um basically make a little knot, but we got it. I'm going to have to do I have to make one more of these, I think, yet. Ooh, a ceramics class. No, Aline, that's a good idea. I do like this idea of like a, a class of some sort. I think he'd really like, like throwing. Um, like a ceramic thing like that. Not sure he's ever done that before. I bet she'd like that. 
that'd be kind of interesting. There is a um, there is a ceramic place near us that has classes and all sorts of stuff. I should check that. That'd be fun. Like one evening, you know, usually these courses, these these classes at like the actual art studios and stuff in town here. Um, a lot of times they're like every Tuesday evening for six weeks or something like that. They're, it's not like a weekend intensive. Um, so if we did something like that, I may be uh, on location for for uh, doing some random thing uh, one day uh, for the next few weeks. But that'd be kind of fun too. I'd do a little little film, do a little live of what we worked on that day. In my head, I'm obviously <laughs> concluding me in all these classes <laughs> when really, you know, I could get a class just for him, but I'm being greedy, greedy, I suppose. What a ceramic class. That, that seems like I know where I would go for that and kind of what would be involved. So that may, might be kind of fun, but I do like the idea of just like a quick fun evening um, thing like the calligraphy. What was it called again? The sip and script. I'm going to Google that for our area. Oh, his little, little leg here is cute. Still some thread left though. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to just hop back over here. Oh my gosh. I really, this is kind of a bummer. I'm, I'm going to, have like hardly any left here to do but whatever I'm definitely not gonna get it with this one thread but I might be able to um, get the rest from scraps though that'd be cool instead of having to cut a whole new big piece for like you know I don't know 12 stitches or less it's looking cute though I'm liking this little tinge of purple in, in here I do really like the ceramics class idea, like where we can make like actual bowls and and like cups and stuff. We definitely like buying um, mugs and bowls, you know, that that like other people have turned and and um, and made. Like we like those artisan made things like as precious objects that we actually like using so actually being able to make them would be so fun and we we've, we've talked about how fun it would be so now i'm jumping way ahead again to doing all the crafts right this is where i always end up but we've we've talked how fun it would be to actually have a kiln and like make little sculptures like it'd be fun to just like make a little koala sculpture out of clay like this and uh, you know and then still be able to make bowls and and that sort of stuff and Maybe that'd be the, be a gateway <laughs> into that world. <laughs> oh God, not unless our house grows. <laughs> but ugh, that'd be fun. All right, I think that's about where I can go with this thread. So I'm gonna weave in the end and we are gonna find from scraps like a tiny, tiny little bit. I did not win thread chicken at all this time. Oh, Sheila says, I would like to make a zipper pouch, but it looks hard to do. Ooh, we should do one again here. We do that every once in a while. Um, like, and sometimes with embroideries, we'll make an embroidery and turn it into a zipper pouch when we're done. I actually have a zillion of those, uh, you know, like zillion of those around here <laughs> that we've made. Um, but that would be fun to do. Because I, I understand what you're saying. Like, I, I feel like intimidated by zippers. Was this three times? One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that sort of thing. Uh, but really once you, um, get like the steps down, uh, then it's good. And actually Sheila, I have a free pattern on my website. If you go to penguinandfish.com and in the search bar, just put in zipper pouch. Um, way at the bottom of that search, a blog post will come up. Actually, two blog posts um, on how to do a zipper pouch. One is just like plain and one has the box corners. Um, so like the plain one. Um, well, I, I, and actually, I think I did a combo pattern. But there's a free pattern that comes with that blog post. 
Um, so you can just check that out and uh, you can go through that on how to do the zipper pouch. And we'll for sure do that again here. But if you wanted to give it a try, like if you have a zipper and um, wanted to give it a try, I do have step-by-step -step instructions with photos and then um, the video where we, where we do some of that in. But we will do it here again for sure at some point. Okay, I have little pieces of purple. I need two pieces of blue. Oh gosh, this is might be a little short for the blue. But I have two pieces that are like the same length. There is some more blue in here though. Let's check that out first. Oh god, that's even shorter. I don't even know if that's worth keeping. For the turkey work, that might be fine. Um, all right, I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to get these last few stitches in like this little amount of thread. And then we'll we'll cut a little piece from here, unless I have a shorter piece. Oh, nope, that's a long piece. Oh, these are all like long, nice pieces of purple. Keep those together. I'm trying to use up this blob. I, I shouldn't even really bother with this blob because I'll be using it um, if I'm going to be using it all up with the um, the lion, I shouldn't care about preserving it as much as I am. All right, I'm going to put these three ends together and we'll just trim that purple down. And I'm going to shoot for getting um, those like, I don't know, eight stitches or so out of this little piece of thread. <laughs> it's a little small. I'm a little worried about uh, thread chicken here, but but we'll give it a go. Oh, which is the easiest to do? I would do it without the boxed corners to start. The box corners is really just the the same thing with just like one extra step. You may want to measure like a, have a little bit more fabric involved um, to make up for you know it being 3D, like having a base. Uh, but just for just for starters, I would do the um, the one without the box corners. And, and it's also lined, so you get, um, it's, it's like a nice lined zipper pouch right away. It's not, like, you're not going to have, like, raw edges on the inside or anything. Okay, so I'm just weaving in the end here, and we'll get started. We've done pouches a few different ways, but that's my go-to typical way. Um, I do it, what, what's in those instructions. Oh, Sue just placed her order. Thank you so much, Sue. I appreciate that. So I'll, I'll get all the orders out tomorrow. Um, and if you place an order um, and haven't received it yet, it's probably because I was gone. I will, get, I will be getting all those orders um, going for you tomorrow. Oh, and then we had the holidays. Yeah, mail's been weird lately because, you know, we've had the, it was the fourth and everything too. So all that will be getting on. It's on again here soon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it'll all get done. All right. I think three little stitches here, which is about all I got left in this thread. And we have his little body done. I think that's probably where we'll end it tonight. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow I might actually just jump to the outline of this guy right away. Um, just because I have those colors picked out. But then we can figure out, you know, the noses and the face and all that stuff after. I haven't figured that out yet, so we'll stick with, stick with what we have figured out. It'd be fun to do like a whole pile of different greens for for those leaves. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to weave in this end. We are done with this dark purple and dark blue, um, unless we decide to use it for something else, like the letter K's or something. I don't know what we'll do for that yet. We are figuring out as we go here. But there we are. Let's give that a little trim. And, uh, okay. Oh, cool. Thanks so much, Robin. 
Here we are! So it's it's subtle. I'm gonna hold it like close to both cameras here so it can be a stick, but you can kind of see, uh, you know, it, I think it reads as blue, but there's a teeny bit. So here we go. There's a teeny, teeny bit of that purple in, just like a single little strand of dark purple. Super subtle, but it does make the whole effect of the blue a little bit more purple. So we're kind of like doing that little blending situation. So, all right, you guys, I think that is good for the night. So we will be doing, um, this little guy will blend the purple and blue. We'll do, we'll do two strands of purple and one strand of this like pale blue, this, um, winter morning blue, um, for him. So we'll outline him tomorrow and then we'll figure out what to do for the faces and all that. We'll make, we'll wait for decisions for tomorrow. <laughs> So, alrighty, so thank you guys again for joining. I appreciate you hanging out with me again, and it's nice to be back. Uh, so we'll be working on this little koala feller for the rest of the week here. And uh, yeah, then Lion will be next week. So thanks again. Thanks again for your orders. I will let the, the uh, mystery gift thing be open for about another 10 minutes or so. So again, that's spend $20 or more in the shop and I will just throw in a mystery gift. You don't need to put in a code or you don't need to add it to your card or anything. I will just look at the timestamp of people who ordered and um, I will plop them into uh, your order. So thank you again. I will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your evening. Good night.